What's up, everybody? Brett Mix here, Mixer Madness for the Monday Night Wars. This is week 71. This is the 199th episode of Raw in its history. The ratings for Raw were a 2.5. For Nitro, it was a 3.0. WCW wins for the 34th week in a row. So now after this week's loss, the total scoreboard is now 17 wins for the WWF, 52 losses, 2 draws through the 71 weeks. It went on from the Monday Night uh, from the Monday Night Raw went on from the Manhattan Center in New York City where they started Raw in, fe- in January of 93. This was February the 24th, 1997 when they hosted this Raw. So the Raw that drew a 2.5 was brought to you by Jerry Lawler and Vince McMahon with Paul Heyman on the side as they advertised ECW a lot this night. Um, this is the week after the first WWF title change in Raw history when Psycho Sid defeated Bret Hart last week with the help of one Steve Austin. So they're setting up the two WrestleMania main events for WrestleMania 13, the austin Bret submission match and Taker Sid for the WWF title. They open the show with the new Blackjacks making their debut against the Godwins. King says the Blackjacks come out here against the Hillbillies and they're beating them up. Ken Shamrock makes his first appearance in the crowd. The ultimate fighting champion is here as they point out. He's with his wife and father. The match ends at 549 if the Blackjacks win a decent back and forth. The Godwins didn't like this victory, so they wrestled them after the match a bit. They brawled. A referee gets slopped in the process. So gross. I rated the match a star and a quarter. ECW is chanted as Heyman says ECW is in the house. It's founding father, Paul E. gets a great pop. He goes on commentary. And we see Stevie Richards of the BWO, the Blue World Order, with Supernova, the Blue Meanie, and 7-Eleven versus Little Guido. King makes fun of him as King and, King and Heyman are at each other's throats all night about ECW. Uh, the BWO come out and mock the NWO. Yeah, Big Stevie Cool, you got them pl- playing the air guitar. Little Guido and Stevie Richards go at it. Raven, the ECW champion, comes out to watch. McMahon calls him Stevie Richards, Stevie Ray, and Heyman corrects him. Lawler takes shots at ECW. Richards wins at 341 and rated the match two stars. He was actually pretty good. Marlena took on Sonny in an arm wrestling contest. Marlena talks about how Sonny is being on 42nd Street. I guess that's a that's that's where they work the streets in New York City, I guess, 42nd. They got a loud, oh, oh, oh. Marlena looks like she's going to win the arm wrestling contest a few times after they fake each other out. Sonny does the Ric Flair fake out, fix the hair, and woo a little bit. And then they finally go at it. They go back and forth, and then Marlena's going to win after Sonny had the initial advantage. Like, this matters, but Sonny had the initial advantage, but Marlena fights back, and then Sonny throws powder in her face. No rating for an arm wrestling match. Goldust took on Savio Vega with The Nation. Savio with his usual submissions and chokeholds after right hands, pretty much his entire repertoire. His spin kicks and his chokeholds. A cross body as Goldust walked into a spinning heel kick. Vega gives the nation a salute and he is back with a trapezius hold. ECW fans were rowdy and not very appreciative of this match, to say the least. Goldust hammering with rights and uh, is caught up with the shots, a headbutt followed by a kiss, and he falls to the canvas. Savio Vega with an elbow, Goldust moved away. A spinning heel kick by Vega that partially caught Goldust. Crush came in to double-team Goldust, who who win by DQ, as the Nation of Domination have started a trend to interfere in each other's matches when it's not going their way. So Goldust wins by DQ, and then this guy named Perez comes out, I believe it's Miguel Perez, and he helps out Goldust. His first appearance on Raw is for Perez. I think he becomes a member of Los Bariquas, if I'm not mistaken. I just got some coffee there. Uh, Taz with Bill Alfonso taking on Team... With Team Taz taking on Mikey Whiprack. Taz gets this awesome entrance. So he this is his WWF debut, not Royal Rumble 2000. This was his WWF debut, but not for, obviously, not longer than this appearance. Rumble 2000 is his official run, so that's... Sort of still his debut, but this this Taz with the T A Z, uh, that's his debut. Heyman promotes the ECW pay per view barely legal. It's coming up in less than two months. McMahon is letting all of this go. Didn't interrupt. Let K- King rips it apart as a part of the gimmick. Sabu then is on top of the R A W letters by the entrance stage, and he jumps off for the, for the flying crossbody to one of the ECW guys on the outside. As Taz had a lot of ECW uh, flag carriers around the ring and Ta- and Sabu came off the top showing how extreme they are. Taz with an arm bar and the suplex into a Taz mission and gets the victory at 233. Uh, Taz 
ex- exploded with the suplex and that Taz mission a star in three quarters. The LOD then take on the headbangers as the Legion of Doom make their return. That's a big surprise McMahon was talking about. Mosh and Thrasher take on the returning LOD. Nitro sucks is chanted. Animal with a power bomb. Road Warriors look very in sync. McMahon loves the Nitro sucks chant. He gets energy in his voice when it t- picks up. That a Bischoff sucks is chanted. Road Warriors take it to the headbangers. The rowdy ECW crowd and WWF just completely going against WCW, which is good to see. Road Warriors take it to the headbangers. Jerry Lawler mentions the bands the headbangers listen to. Nine Inch Nails, Marilyn Manson, and the Butthole Surfers. Big Bang goes, I beg your pardon. Thrasher dropped away. This is, and I'm reviewing this when all these McMahon allegations come out, and it's, I, I can't, I can't look at him the same. It's weird. So when I hear him say, "I beg your pardon," about the butthole surfers, it makes me go, "Well, Vince, it's not really as bad as what you do." Anyway, Hawk took a stage dive up top, a double clothesline as Hawk broke through their clothesline support of his own. That's one of the things I'm thinking about going back watching these Monday Night Wars. Is uh, my my picture of Vince is going to be completely altered and he's in so much of these Monday Night Raws coming up that it's going to be weird but I'm going to just stay away from comments like that and detract from my memory because it's I'll be like Triple H I choose to focus on the positive this man this match went to a double ca- uh, double count out at 744 they didn't want the new headbangers to lose even though there was the L- LOD's first match back so they didn't want either team to lose rated it as star in three quarters Tommy Dreamer with Beulah take on Devon Dudley and the, and then half of the screen was split for the Undertaker's promo so we didn't really see the end of this but Bubba ends up coming out and helping the Dudleys to a 3D then the Sandman comes out and bangs his stick on his head and uh, does the whole Sandman gimmick so we get some uh, extreme wrestling in this match there's weapons there's chair shots there's steel steps involved there's weapons from the crowd we got a 3d we got sandman hitting a cane on his face while he's drinking beer we got Heyman and lawler they're almost at each other's throats around the announce table king and Heyman almost get at it uh they promote the pay-per-view one last time and mcmahon's like well this is our last ecw match of the night kings settle down and they just promote all what ecw is all about extreme violence and mayhem and they did a good job so that match was a star and a half then came the moment when austin talks about when he always says he was sitting home with a busted leg and hears that he's going to be in a submission match with brett the hitman Hart. remember how austin says that at the hall of fame and in other places, he says he just hears that on TV. Well, we get that official announcement. Todd Bankengill goes, We got Austin and Brett in a submission match we're just hearing for the first time at WrestleMania. Shamrock, what do you think of that? And I'm writing this out while Shamrock spoke, so I forgot what Shamrock said. But uh, Shamrock did pick The Undertaker to beat Sid. Uh, so that's interesting that Austin hears. And they show the graphic of Austin in a submission match. So that's what Austin... And uh, he had a bad leg because they just showed before this the last week's clip where Austin limped out to when he beat Brett in the head with a chair and Sid became the new champion. They showed that package, so Austin limped out. So this is this is the episode where he had the busted leg at home and he saw the for the first time submission match. So uh, that's interesting to see. Uh, then the Undertaker faced Farouk in the main event. Undertaker versus Farouk, a preview of the King of the Ring '97 main event we all know and love. Just kidding. Of course, that's a bit of sarcasm, but this match I won't prejudge because I don't remember how it went. I just know the King of the Ring 97 main event is a little bit less than average. A slower style on this main event is Farouk chopped down the leg of the Undertaker, taking him off his vertical base, doing a lot of leg work, but the Undertaker still hit a high knee, which is King said, how is he doing that, McMahon? But he's, you know, he's supernatural, so Taker is allowed to not sell the leg. He came brawling back, and in the end, at 11.28, a familiar pattern happens with the nation comes out, crossing Savio Vega when Taker, when Farouk was in trouble from Taker. Taker was about to hit his big moves, and the nation interfered, so I gave the match two stars, as it was actually a decent match between Simmons and Undertaker. Decent. That's the match portion of the show. At the end, LOD ended up interfering with the nation, so we had a big brawl between the Undertaker and the LOD against the nation. This episode of Raw, I scored a quality rating of 6 out of 10, even though it lost in the ratings 3.0 to 2.5 uh, to Nitro. 6 out of 10 because we missed Brett, Austin, Sean, but they put up video packages of the guys we missed, and we still got the return of the LOD with some good ECW promotion. So overall, this episode was watchable. 6 out of 10 sounds about right. 
Uh, and yeah, they're, we're getting closer to WrestleMania 13. So stay tuned to the later reviews. That's this one. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.